Welcome to new Alpha 17, 17.4, 7 days to die build video. Not quite the base build. Today we're going to look at Screamer farming. I previously made a couple of corridors that allow you to farm some experience, but they were just basic concepts. I didn't expand them and make them look really good or work particularly in any particular situation. So I thought, let me make one that would work pretty well as far as Screamer Horde farming. So what is Screamer Horde farming? Well, Screamer Hordes is, of course, the hordes that appear when the Screamers scream. And what kind of mechanic is this? Well, if you've played the game previously, obviously you know. So I'm going to go through some of it, how to build it, how it functions, and some thoughts around it. And of course, as always, make sure you subscribe, like, comment below what other base builds you would like to see. Alpha 18 is going to be here soon, so uh, I'm not sure what other videos I should be making. So screamers appear when there is enough heat in the area and heat doesn't refer to temperature heat. It refers to heat map as far as activity goes. So actions that you take such as shooting, cooking, using the forge, using the workbench, bench, etc. can cause heat to build up, meaning there is some activity in the area that the zombies are drawn to. When it hits a particular value, 100 in this case, it will spawn a screamer zombie. And that's the lady with the black long hair which will sort of move towards the location and if she sees you she will scream you'll hear this high-pitched scream which usually means that the zombies are going to be coming running in trying to kill you now why would you want to summon them that's a really good question the reason is you want to summon them for not for the loot which is something you could do in alpha 16 but for the experience with a lot of things being level blocked in alpha 17 gaining experience is a good way of leveling up so sometimes you just want to do that to get a lot of extra experience and this is a reasonably good way of doing it so how do we do this well we need to get a reasonably flat area because of course like any base it just makes it a little bit easier and we're going to make a staircase up and you could make ramps if you wanted to. It really is up to you. In my case, I prefer to use a staircase because it takes a little bit longer for the zombies to get up there. And we want to have a little bit of extra time to slow them down. Once we're up, we're going to make a platform. And the platform is, of course, can't be too long. So make sure you have some supports on the way as well so it doesn't come crashing down. As far as the length of this corridor, you can choose that yourself. Don't make it too long. 50 is going to be too long. Maybe something around 10, 15 is good enough. You basically want to make it long enough that you have time to shoot and kill the zombies, but not so long that the zombies decide that they don't want to path anymore because getting to you is too troublesome. So maybe about 10, 15 works pretty well. If you have a High game stage or if you have a lot of concurrent zombies you could do a little bit more than that maybe do 15 to 20 but again if you make it too long zombies will stop to path and that can be a problem with any build because uh, with some of the changes they don't necessarily want to path all the way if you make it too far in this build i'm also going to make some diamond shaped holes in the floor and why would i do that well the reason is that we want to have a way for the zombies to path across and they do that across these ramps even if they're on the side but when they walk in the middle they generally will fall down or even if they run they will fall down and that's pretty important because we don't want them to reach all the way we want them to fall down midway and have to go back to the beginning and start their journey over. We used to be able to use uh, 50 pillars, for instance. That doesn't work anymore. These uh, diamond-shaped holes work pretty well. There are other ways uh, to accomplish it. I don't think poles will. I think a uh, quarter or maybe one-eighth uh, blocks bite. Uh, again, try it out a few different ones, but this way works pretty well. So at the end of the, the corridor, I'm going to make a platform where I will have a small little house with walls and, of course, some iron bars that I can shoot down to any zombies that might be below. And again, this is sort of the base part of it where I can be safe. I can put some chest, I guess. I can put my bedroll if I want to, or maybe workbench. You could make it larger, of course. I'm just trying to make a small, neat little place just to showcase the concept. Once it's all done, make sure you try to close it off or at least make sure they can't get up on the walls. If they do that, they will just bypass the corridor, and which is, of course, not what you want. So make sure you prevent that. At our little base section, we're going to try to block it off. We are also going to be using these hatches 
And the hatches are good because they will prevent uh, attacks by, for instance, the cops or the vultures, but we can open them up and shoot through as well. You could use bars, but uh, you can still be spotted and they'll keep spitting at you. So we're trying to sort of prevent or minimize that. So using hatches in this way, up and down, is pretty effective. Now, of course, we need a way in. So we're just going to have a simple way with a ladder up and down into it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a way to get in. So the basics of it is crafted. I'm also going to be putting some hatches in the build. And uh, the way to do that is, well, you could put them above, but that will block some other things that we want to put there, such as the bar wire. So I'm going to put them underneath. And the reason I want to have them is because if you keep them open, they will just keep falling through. And that also makes it uh, a little bit diff difficult for you to uh, repair things. So I'm going to put them. So if I want to walk there, or I want the zombies to walk there. I will just close them so they will walk on top of them and continue upwards. Of course, they will be jumping and leapfrogging their way. Once that is done, we put down the poles. The poles are important because the poles keep the zombies and yourself from rubbing up against the barbed wire. Barbed wire has this funny effect. One, it slows you down. But two, it will also deal damage, a little bit of damage, if you rub up against it. But if you put these poles, they are thick enough such that you actually never rub up against the, the barbed wire. So you don't take the damage, but you still are subjected to the slowness. And that's exactly what we want to have. We want everything to slow as it tries to walk past. As you see, we have the corridor, we have the barbed wire, we have the poles. Of course, nothing is painted. So we're going to have to go through and do that as well. And of course, you can paint it any way you want it. Or just leave it unpainted if that's your preference. It just looks a little bit better if you put a little bit of paint on it. It uh, also can make it a little bit easier to spot when there is some damage to it. Because uh, some of the concrete textures uh, don't necessarily show as easy because the reinforced one says uh, has all these dots on it. So you might mistake it for not being damaged. You could make this one in steel if you wanted to. I would say co reinforced concrete at the least because it will take some damage. Upgrading to steel is probably good if and when you have access to steel. And we are here at the finished build. Well, pretty much. It's almost finished. You see, we have the way up. We have the corridor. All nice. What we are lacking, though, is a way to get screamers to come. So what we're going to do, and this is a pretty s simple and straightforward way of doing it. We're going to place down a bunch of campfires. Campfires create heat. And I'm not talking about just temperature heat. I'm talking about the heat map. So by having a bunch of these ones, we'll also get a bunch of the scream of zombies. And of course, it'll be nice and bright can be a bit noisy though so we're gonna put in a bunch of uh, wood here and let that run and uh, once we get some screamers we're gonna see what happens all right we have the heat building here and if you want to check how much heat we have you can see that here we have 36 percent heat and you'll see there's already one coming here it was up a little bit higher and uh, i've been waiting here for a while so it will move towards where the player is. And I think, okay, there's another one. I, I've been doing things in this area for a while and it causing some, uh, some heat to build up and, uh, and we have some more. So with this scream is coming, of course, you don't get uh, all these ones just for a few of these ones. I was making a lot of noise by, by doing other things as well. All right, so we're getting a bunch of screamers here. So let's see if we can get them to scream. And uh, come on. Yes. See they scream and here they are some coming there. Alright. It should be coming in here and Alright. All that noise. And of course. I have a few more screamers than I normally would have. I actually manually spawned in because I didn't want to wait so long. That's why you see so many of them. You do see from the heat that it does go up. So eventually you will get a lot of them. All right. So you can stand here and you see they will slowly make their way and you can, well, bash them. And you notice that they get slowed down in their movement here. And of course, the cop outside is uh, deciding to to be shooting at me. And uh, usually, 
the zombies will actually be <laughs> be falling down but they could make it all the way here it really depends on a little bit of how lucky you are most of the time they will be falling down but some will make it through and that's why i have multiple of these ones you could uh, obviously make sure that um, they come all the way by closing these ones but <laughs> i want to try to uh, prevent them from getting here and uh, you see you're getting a lot of them and if you make this longer you have more time to shoot them but this is still fairly good and if they get close of course you can knock them and well they will fall down if you have any good weapons you can just stand there as well and just fire away i would uh, urge against using for instance explosives because that can damage or break oh even he fell down uh molotovs are good molotovs let's get a bunch of these ones so let's throw some molotovs the reason these ones are good is that oh it's because i don't know how to throw them <laughs> it's because all right i'm gonna go into god mode here so i don't kill myself the reason molotovs are good is because you get you get the experience for kills of course i am really bad at throwing here so i should be doing that the throwing in the game is really weird yeah 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 now i did put in these ones as well okay i put in these ones as well just to prevent the zombies to get through and uh, let's shoot them as well Normally the, the cops you want to take out through using your weapons because if they explode like right there, they will do damage to well to what's down there. And you see some of them get frustrated. Oh frustrated by not being able to get up and they'll start bashing things. But this works pretty well. Now I am a uh, max level already, so I don't really get any experience here, but it's a really good way of doing it. And uh, if you take care of, if you get too many of the, of the screamers, you can just go up here, turn off things and, oh, what are you doing here? Okay, let me just get rid of him. Then you go up, just go up here, turn this ones off and the heat will stop. And I think that it might be down. Nope. Just one made it through. The rest of them are just running around now you want to make sure that you take care of the screamers as they come up here if you're getting too many because screamers will scream a few times and then they will stop screaming but a screamer can actually scream and summon in even more screamers so you see in most cases they don't actually even make it all the way but we do have additional screamers coming in and of course the spiders can make it all the way through and that's another reason why having this ones might be pretty good because at least it prevents some of them from getting here i wouldn't recommend just standing here with a crossbow because a crossbow generally does not give you enough firepower to take care of them but let's see what i have do i have anything else oh yeah i have an assault rifle and let me get some wet ammo seven let's do that so why would you want to do a Screamer Horde as opposed to a normal Blood Moon Horde if you want to get experience? The reason is simple. A Blood Moon Horde you can't stop. You can't actually even call it in when you want to. But a Screamer Horde you can. You want it to stop, you kill the streamers. You want it to start, you just create some heat. So it gives you a very good way of just controlling what you get in here. And you see with a weapon here, it's fairly easy to... Uh, to just keep track of what's coming in and just killing them most of them will die and you want to get rid of the, the cop the type of zombies that appear does depend on what game stage you have so at later game stages you get a lot more of cops and radiated at earlier game stages you generally just get the normal zombies so you will definitely see that change during the course of your game starting in pretty normal zombies and uh, ending up with pretty bad ones and you see because there are normal screamers around i think i'm getting rid of most of them 
You see that no more zombies coming either. These are the ones that have been been running here for a while. So let's take them out here. And let's take out the cop. And of course this is a fair bit of ammo. Now you do see an issue here as well. And this can definitely happen, which is why upgrading this might help. So let me just stop the AI here. Stop. stop. Okay. You see zombies normally will just run their way here. And they won't generally attack these ones. This is probably because of a cop has exploded. What you can see happening sometimes that all right, you guys are in the way. All right, go away. Okay. What you can see is sometimes happening though is that they've gotten stuck here. So they're beating a little bit on these ones. So having, for instance, ramps might might help because they are beating on these ones because they're having problems getting up. So if you put on ramps as opposed to putting in like this, oh, come on. This way, not this way. Embarrassing. If you put in ramps here instead, you might actually save some of that trouble because they will generally just walk up instead of getting stuck and trying to jump. Um, it does take them longer to go up if you're having this kind of staircase, but it does have the, the drawback that they can start attacking them as well. So upgrading to steel would also be a good idea and uh, making sure you repair it once in a while. Now you do see that, and let me bring up my minigun, minibine, uh, nail gun. There is damage to these ones. And the reason this is the case is because when the zombies fall down, they have this very, very weird mechanic where they will take a bash even as they are down here and they'll bash in there with their fist and the damage will be transferred to up here and that's just one of the i would call it a bug but it's probably intended it does mean that these ones do take damage and that's why in some other uh, situations like in my let's play i actually made dual of these corridors simply to prevent that uh, because if, you, if they take out this one for instance and then they take out this one then they have no more legitimate path to get to you and that means they're going to start bashing everything down here so you want to make sure that doesn't happen too early and upgrading them to steel is one good way of doing that. You see most of the damage is here because they, most of them fell down here. There's a little bit here, there's a little bit here because a couple of them fell down here as well. But that's about it. I do have some of the heat generated. Let me see. Oh, 1.53. There was probably some spawn. I do have the AI stopped. Oh, yeah, you can see. You can see a screamer has been spawned in here she's not moving because i stopped the AI. and there might be there might be some out here as well that are waiting to come in oh i don't see any possible it's a little bit difficult to find them sometimes but this is how it goes make sure you turn off all your campfires once you're done because otherwise you're just going to get more and more and more of the zombies so to sum up kill the cops they do the most damage and uh, I guess in some cases they actually even get stuck inside the concrete. I don't know how that actually happened. Why did that happen? Yeah, she's totally stuck. Really weird. That shouldn't have happened. But there are some of these poor small bugs that occur in the game. Well, hope you enjoyed. Try it out. Let me know what design would you do for Screamer Horde Farming? Would you do something like this? Or would you do something differently? See you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.